Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 53 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. I'm just uh, taking a look at what's going on in my area here, and let's go see where we're at with stuff. Uh, if we take a look outside real quick, we'll note that our tree farm is jammed up again. Ugh, I really need to upgrade this cart. Where is it? Basically, what happened is, I'm sure, uh, the cart decided, hey, I uh, my woodcutter's broken. Aww hassle let's see what we can do to fix that up shall we so uh let's take a look at the woodcutter we can see here that there's a bunch of them what do i have on there now i'm pretty sure I, I don't have the basic one i have the hardened one that's right so that's like the second tier like basic obviously tier one hardened is uh tier two and then uh the final and most uber and best of them all would be the tier three the galgadorian woodcutter now this guy uh we can basically take our hardened woodcutter that we already have and uh you know add on a little bit of iron and some galgadorian metal and we should be able to make something very cool and powerful but galgadorian metal ooh, this stuff is expensive so first off how much of this do we need again uh we need five pieces of galgadorian metal well we can get that by smelting a lump of galgador okay so let's see yeah, basically one lump of Galgador equals one Galgadorian metal. Uh, we're going to need a block of diamond in order to get ourselves two lumps of Galgador. So we're going to need three blocks of diamond overall, if my math is correct on that, right? That'll give us six lumps of Galgador, which will give us the necessary five Galgadorian metal. Okay, so that's uh, expensive. And we need an eye of Galgador. Oh, and we also need some of the stabilized metal too. That's expensive. Eye of Galgador? Ooh, fermented spider eye. Uh, Gas tear. Magma cream. Eye of ender. Whew, that is expensive looking stuff. All right, so uh, yeah, we're going to need three of these, so we're going to need... Uh-huh. A lot. So we're going to need, like, nine total? Yeah. Nine total. Uh, eyes of Ender. And uh, that's expensive stuff. Fermented spider eyes. Let's see. I'm pretty sure those are rather easy to make, right? Yeah. Mushroom spider eye sugar. That's not a big deal. All right. So let me start gathering the stuff. I know I'm a little bit short on Ender Pearls, so I'm definitely going to have to make sure my Ender Farm is up and running. In fact, I might even upgrade that thing a little bit. So I'll be back in a few minutes when we're ready to take a look. Um, how am I for Ender Pearls? I have like none, right? Yeah. I might go hunting some Endermen in a minute. All right, guys, I think that's enough Enderman hunting for now. Remember, you have to fly a decent distance away from the base because we have a Magnum Torch down, so that's going to prevent anything from spawning anywhere nearby. I did go ahead and hook up my um, ender lilies out here, kind of up on top, kind of hoping that this would help, but it really doesn't seem to be doing much. Um, and I actually checked with Tema, and he said, yeah, it's it's going to help a little bit, but like the absolute minimum is um, a full week of Minecraft days. So you have to wait like full seven days. Um, so it'll bring it a little bit closer, maybe to that minimum of a week, but you're really not going to be able to get much better than that. All right, so I should have, I've been throwing them into my uh, sorting system here. Ender, oh yeah, nice, 15. All right, so let's get started working on some Galgadorian metal, uh, which is just going to be craziness. Uh, so we're going to obviously need uh, three blocks of diamond. That's going to be fun. Uh, let's see. This is where having this uh, ME system really comes in handy because it just makes it that much easier to craft up stuff. So that's all but three of my diamonds. Awesome. Uh, let's see. We're also going to want a couple eyes. Uh, let's see. Uh, blaze powder. Do I have any of that really? Let's see. Oh yeah, I do. Cool. Uh, let's actually get one more blaze rod because what I'm going to do is throw this guy into a pulverizer as we know. That'll just give us a little bit more blaze than if we had gotten it, you know, through normal means. Okay, so we need nine eyes of Galgador, right? So first off, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, we're going to need even more blaze rods. I really need to automate the creation of blaze rods and automate the creation of several other things that are just going to really help get this going. Okay, so that's six, so I need three more. All right, and magma cream. Oh, that's going to be a problem. I really need more blaze rods. And how am I for gassed? Six of them? Uh, that's really not enough. All right, it looks like I'm going over to the nether now uh, to get some work done in there. So I'm going to go kill some enemies in the nether. A few blaze rods and a few uh, gas tears and a couple other things. I'll be back when I'm done. 
Well, I don't know about you guys, but I'm really glad that I've got looting on my sword because that made that trip a little bit more enjoyable. Got a bunch of blaze rods, got a bunch of gas tears, even picked up a little bit of cobalt and ardite as I was flying around looking for uh, ghasts. Not the easiest thing sometimes to find. Um, it's always funny, like, for me, I've always had this tradition of I go into the nether for the first time and there's just ghasts everywhere shooting fireballs at me like crazy. And then I go into the nether, like, a few episodes later, and I'm like, I need to find some gas tears, and there's none. There's not a single gas anywhere to be found, and I'm flying all over the place, and there's just none anywhere. I'm like, is this game broken all of a sudden? Where are all the gas at? Like, they were shooting me like crazy when I didn't want them there, and then when I'm actually hunting for them, oh, forget it, they're everywhere. So that's, uh, you know, a lot of fun, always. But I've got the stuff I need, so why don't I get to crafting? All right, guys, it took the last of my diamonds. Like, I literally have zero diamonds at this point, but I made a little bit more stabilized metal, and now I should be able to get some Galgadorian stuff. Uh, let's see, Galgadorian metal comes from a lump of Galgador. Cool. And the Galgadorian drill requires five Galgadorian metal. Okay, so let's get our lump of Galgador. I need one, two, three. Perfect. Nice, six of them, perfect. And let's smelt it up because that's step two. We need to turn these lumps of Galgador into uh, actual Galgadorian metal. And then we're ready to actually combine it with the hardened woodcutter. Now let's go outside and show you guys what's involved in uh, making this thing, you know, get a little bit of a change going on. Let's sneak out there this way. I always like this method of travel. All right, Mr. Cart, you're with me. There you are right this way sir so that you know took all the stuff that was in the inventory with it and let's see do I have uh, the cart modifier I do good so all I need to do is uh, first off uh, toss this cart in the modular cart modifier thing and there we are everything's there so what I want to do is remove the tool so we're just gonna click that guy uh, ready to assemble oh, 40 minutes really that's brutal that's a long time. Uh, unfortunately, we we need to remove it to get this part, and then we have to add the hardened one in. So we're going to get this thing rolling at least, and then uh, we'll probably have to come back. So let's start modifying. Yeah, that's going to take a long time. Go ahead and modify. You have a good time. Uh, it's cooking. There we go. It's removing that little piece. I'll be back in about 40 minutes when we're ready to move on. Let's see, what I probably should do is check on my supply of Elementum. How are things doing? Ah, we're running a little bit low here. I'm going to grab a stack, even though we're running low. I know, it's terrible. Um, we do have the tree farm running out there, at least, so that's producing a little bit of wood for us, but not nearly as much as the Steve's cart farm was. I'm going to throw some Elementum in there. Maybe I won't throw some Elementum in there. You don't work, huh? No Elementum has to be coal or charcoal. Great. All right, not a problem. Coal, I'll just grab a stack of that. I was hoping to be able to get, like, you know, just a little bit more burn time out of it, but oh well. Coal it is. All right, back in a little while, I guess. So at least to hold us over until we get this cart back up and running, 40 minutes and counting, uh, let's just plant these guys down. That sound like a plan? So maybe just one, two... That should help. That'll at least get us a little bit more rapid tree growth. And then uh, hopefully that'll hold us over until the cart's ready. So guys, while I was sitting around waiting uh, for this cart to cook up, I decided to make myself a couple force field emitters. Ender pearls and advanced circuits and solenoids and all this fun stuff. Uh, what's cool about these is I can install these as an energy shield. Just requires two force field emitters each. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. And uh, let's see, they, they bump up your armor quite a bit and they don't really weigh much. Remember, like, your weight determines like the more you weigh the slower you move right uh, now if I had installed just iron plating or diamond plating iron plating is very heavy like that's you really don't want to use unless you have to diamond plating is expensive it requires diamonds and you know how I'm doing with diamonds right now I have zero uh, so that's not a good idea and then uh, energy shielding is pretty nice it's very light um, but it does consume energy every time you get hit so I just went and installed this on my uh, chest plate here so it's going to of course cost energy every time I get hit but at least it adds a little bit of protection now what I'm going to do is I need more energy 
ender pearls because um, that's kind of like the uh, the recipe requires ender pearls. So uh, I want to get that installed in at least three or four pieces of armor so that way I can stop being such a little squishy Steve here because believe me I'm getting tired of every time I go into battle like oh one hit and I'm like half health and I'm like oh boy and then I die really easily. So no fun having that happen. So there we go. Uh, now I've got plenty of juice charged back up in there and uh, these guys will protect me from damage just a little bit for now but believe me we'll uh, do better soon and yeah these are definitely slow growing but I do want to go over and check in on my wood production just kind of curious if we're doing a little better now with wood how are you guys making out yeah see increase in wood uh, because we've got more wood in here now we obviously are having a surplus back and uh, we're getting a lot more alimentum so at least we're being held over by the fact that I put the lamps over there I'll move them back to the mana bean farm shortly uh, but since we're sitting around waiting why don't I go ahead and upgrade my mana bean storage uh, to the ME system that I promised you guys last time good plan alright so let's see what do we have down here right now we've just got an ender chest with a couple bits of mana beans not terrible but I want to get like a very basic storage of uh, mana beans so let's uh, get that going I might still have my Emmy chest in here that I used to demonstrate with previously don't I awesome uh, I'm going to want an Emmy controller because remember every network needs a controller oh of course I don't have any diamonds um, yeah let's see processor I don't I think I have diamonds. Yeah, I definitely don't. All right, so let's run our quarry for a little bit. I had stopped it because, believe it or not, this thing burns through the power storage of my um, resonant energy cell. Just look at that thing. It's just chewing through the power, um, decimating it. Like, just tons and tons of power just gets sucked into the thing. Uh, both the moving, of course, and the mining requires a lot of power. So after you run it for, like, I don't know, a few minutes here, this thing will completely drain out and uh, what you'll wind up with is I'll, I'll demonstrate for you real quick if I can get out there what you'll notice is the following happened to the terrain let's go for a flight so my thing is actually like really far out there at this point I've been running it a little bit oh and I also want to move it soon because I don't like where it is um, but you'll see I was running it for a while running it for a while and then boom we drained and lost power so basically what happens is um, it goes to mine and it doesn't realize it's out of power so it, it goes to mine the things move real slow and six seconds later it hasn't even touched the ground here so then it goes and gets uh, propelled forward so let's see hey there it is cool so once the uh, energy cell is out it kind of stops mining and doesn't do a very good job so we're gonna want to consider um, some kind of uh, solution to that. I would also like to consider moving this thing because right now we're um, kind of over an ocean is where we wound up and the downside to this is there's really not much below us. Um, you can see here like it's actually really deep down there where this is and there's a lot of lava and these things keep getting stuck so while it's doing a good job mining um, it's not being super efficient because it just happens to be over lava. I think the ground there starts at like Y level 30 so there's very little ground for it actually to to mine up. So we want to do something about that. Don't worry, I've got some plans, as always. All right, so uh, we're going to let this thing mine for a few minutes, hopefully get ourselves just a few diamonds, and then we'll be back in a minute to uh, build ourselves a little miniature AE system for our mana bean storage. Ooh, I spy a diamond. Nice. All right, so I just taught my AE system how to make a 16K storage unit. I'm going to request one of those. That's going to use a little bit more of diamonds, actually, but that's okay. You can see it's crafting things up pretty well. Oh, missing materials, quartz, cutting knife. Didn't I teach you how to make one of those? I guess not. All right, let's do that. Quartz, cutting knife. Now you know. Uh, I just need actual sticks. Planet Logistics has been a little bit weird in this version about the Or Dictionary of things, and sometimes it just doesn't realize what's what with the Or Dictionary. There it goes. Now it's cooking things up again. So cruising along, moving nice and quick, of course, because we've got overclockers in our macerator, and we've got an induction furnace doing all our smelting and stuff. Very, very useful to have that. And it occurs to me I don't really need an ME controller. Like, if I wanted to do anything fancy, I do need one but I think I can get away without one. So that's what I'm gonna do for now. Uh, what I also did grab is a hardened energy cell and I wouldn't mind charging this guy up. So let's uh, set him to blue. There we go. That should start charging him up. We'll give that guy a few minutes to charge too. Um, I'll probably need a Tesseract for power over there just so that the power is always available, but I don't feel like making one right now, so we'll let it go. Uh, you are still crafting. 
that shouldn't be much longer, and we'll get our 16K storage. So remember I told you more often than not, I like to use 4K storage because we're not going to really be storing a lot of stuff or a lot of, more often than not, we're storing like many different types of things, not, um, you know, a ton of the same thing. But in the case of the mana beans, we are actually storing a ton of pretty much the same thing, um, or at least uh, less than 52, or it's, it's 52 different types of things, so that's less than the 63 types that one storage unit can hold. So uh, let's go out there. So this guy does need power. Uh, we don't have power out there at the moment. Not a big deal. We'll uh, get the hardened energy cell set up in a moment. So let's see. What I want to do then is get this guy down right about... I'll probably move this thing. Put him here. Then we'll get our item duck set up. Switch this guy. I'm not going to set him up just yet to actually pull items out of the ender chest. So any mana beans that we do collect over the next few minutes will just sit in the chest there. No problem. Let's go get that power cell. And then we'll flip it on. So the power cell is going to be, uh, unfortunately, I don't think the ME chest uses much power though. Oh, see how low this thing got already? Yeah, I better turn off my mining operation. Let's see, you're still running, right? Yeah, items flowing in. Cool. I can see them over there. A bunch of stuff. There comes some more. All right, let's turn this thing off. Almost full. There we go. All filled up. Come with me, little buddy. All right, right down here, I'll probably just pop him underground here. Like, like so. And we'll just set the top to be an output of power. Cool. Now we can put stuff in there. So all I should have to do is click this guy, set you low, and then we should be getting mana beans piped in. Perfect. That's what I wanted to see. So uh, give me just a minute here. I'm going to be uh, clearing this thing out. All right, one of these days I'll make that a test rack. But as we can see, it's draining a very small amount of power to keep things up and running. And it'll you know, take a little bit every time I think it inserts a mana bean. But for now, it's uh, it's sufficient. It'll probably last us a little while until I get around to making a Tesseract for here. So you can see we're actually not too bad on mana beans. We're actually a little bit low on Victus because I've had to use a little bit of that uh, recently and a couple of the ones we're low on. But overall, we're doing all right. So we're going to let our mana bean farm run now. This should be able to store, let's see, like right now it's, it's not too bad, really. I mean, it's got a very small amount of stuff in there it can hold a lot more so i'm looking forward to seeing how much it can hold and we'll be back in a few minutes to keep an eye on these things and now i have to just kind of let's see we've managed to get armor on our armor that's always good to have and we've managed to get a steve's cart thing let's see where the timer at on this Ooh, still 15 minutes oh, i gotta throw some coal in there you know what let me get a hopper just to make things a little easier on myself because that's always been a hassle. Let's see, there we are. So this way, I don't waste time waiting for this thing when it really shouldn't be waited on. That's gonna work, right? Good, there it goes. Cool. All right, back in a few. Ooh, I know what I wanna work on. Um, so I talked about wanting to relocate the mining operation, right? Like right now it's it's doing all right, but frankly, I could do with even more stuff. Maybe I'm getting a little greedy at this point, but I like to be as efficient as possible. There is a place we can go that could have just a little bit more by way of resources, and I'm not thinking of a miscraft age. I'm thinking of the deep dark. Uh, in order to get to the deep dark, though, we're going to have to go ahead and get ourselves a portal to the deep dark. And as we can see here, it's part of extra utilities. It's actually a whole new dimension that is really dangerous, really scary. And uh, as a bonus, you get uh, extra resources. I think it doubles uh, the regular world generation of ores. So if you go mining in there, you'll get a lot more stuff. Uh, in order for this thing to work out, though, we're going to need a lot. Uh, we're going to need a lot of cobblestone, first off. Extra Utilities gives you the opportunity to compress your cobblestone. So we're going to need some uh, four pieces of triple compressed cobblestone. That's 729 cobblestone each. And 
a piece of quadruple compressed cobblestone. That's 6,500. Um, it actually lets you compress it down pretty crazy, down to octuple compressed, which is 43 million pieces of cobblestone. So if you don't know what to do with your cobblestone, like, I don't need that much cobble. I've been voiding it in the trash can. But if you would like to, feel free. Have a blast. Um, a good way to get this stuff uh, crafted is, uh, let's get ourselves a couple more blank patterns just because it looks like we're getting a little low. I'm going to just ask for 10. You should be able to pull that off, right? One. What are we short on? Glass. Haha. Uh, you should be able to handle that though, right? Um, I taught this guy how to make glass recently, didn't I? Yes. Cool. There goes some sand. He's taking care of that. All right. So while we've got, um, you know, it's requesting sand from the logistics pipe system, I'll help it out a little bit. Just grab a few pieces and throw it in there. There you are. Now make some sand for me, would you? Some glass. There it is. Um, let's get those blank guys. There we are, 10 of them. See, that was easy. Uh, what I'd like to do is compressed. So, uh, regular compressed cobblestone is 9 cobble in code. Uh, double compressed in code. Triple compressed in code. And then octuple compressed in code. And uh, let's just go ahead and throw all these in here. And I'm actually just going to request, um, let's start off with one quadruple compressed begin. So that should just start going crazy. And we can see it all happening up here. So it's going a little bit nuts, crafting as much of this cobble as possible. Hopefully uh, we've got enough in here. Um, Looks like we don't exactly have a ton of it available. It's requesting it probably from the ME system at this point. Are we there yet? Or not really? Yeah, it looks like it might be. See, cobblestone zipping over. So if we wanted to, we could speed this up a little bit. Let's do this. I'm going to get a storage bus. So I'm going to need an interface. Which I'm pretty sure I taught this thing how to make in the past. Good, I did. Craft that for me, would you? It's working on it. There it goes. So if we put this together here and we were to get just a few pieces of cable, what I'm going to do to help speed this along, I'm just going to cancel this request at the moment. Hold on a minute, you guys. Nobody panic. I'm going to get another barrel. And I'm going to swap these out. Where is my portal gun? Or gravity gun? Come here, barrel. I'm just going to put a different one down right here. So that way we'll start collecting more cobblestone. So as we'll see here, like throw a piece of cobblestone in. We'll just let like one little quick mining operation go. All the cobble should zip over there correctly and we'll make sure that that's the case. So we'll start collecting a new barrel's worth of cobble. See, we just got a lot of cobble. <laughs> a ridiculous amount, if you will. All right, let's put this guy over here. And all I need to do then is to set this up. Uh, let's get those cables. And we'll put the storage bus, I'm pretty sure, on the bottom. So let's see, how much cobble do we have in the system right now? We've got nine pieces of cobble. If we attach the storage bus here, a storage bus allows you to basically take any vanilla or, um, you know, any kind of storage in any way, shape, or form. Uh, actually, I'll have to connect over to here because that's not actually part of the network. Um, and hook it into your AE system. So you could attach a storage bus to a chest. You can hook it up to a barrel. You can hook it up to an ender chest. You can hook it up to like a thousand different things. Um, so you can really just kind of anything that's any other kind of storage device, like, you know, regular old storage, will work. So by doing that, we should now have access to that cobble, right? Uh, well, we've got 73 cobble. It might need to go on the top. If it can't go on the bottom, it might need to go on the top. Cobblestone now? Okay, maybe not. Give me a minute, let me figure out where this guy's going wrong. I thought it was the bottom.
Hmm. You know what? It's actually working from the bottom there. Look, watch what happens. For some reason, and I don't know if it's just a, a cross between logistics pipes and whatnot, but see how every time I pull one out, like it's keeping it at 64? So I don't know if that's because there's a logistics pipe confusion or what, but it's actually pulling it out of that barrel. So whatever. Where's that cobblestone compression? Let's get um, that quadruple again. Begin. So that should be able to run a lot faster now because we don't have to wait for it. And uh, we're out of view, so that's okay. So yeah, see how much faster it's producing it? And it's just draining it straight out of here. Or at least it should be. Yep, see there it goes. It's changing. So it is pulling out of that barrel. It just isn't, for whatever reason, reporting the correct number. That's a little bit of a weird bug, but no problem. Uh, let me actually grab some cobblestone because I like to always have a little bit on me. And uh, while that's cooking up, I'm going to show you guys how to make the next uh, item that we need. That's going to be pretty important for this. So the other thing we need to get to the deep dark is unstable ingots. These guys are a little bit crazy. And you'll see here on the tooltip, um, it's a crazy little process that you have to go through. These ingots are really unstable. And if you don't use them in the crafting table within 10 seconds of making them, they'll explode and very much kill you. And it's pretty nasty and you don't want to like get caught unprepared. So in order to make these unstable ingots, you need to get a division sigil, which is activated and you have to take iron and divide it by diamond. Iron divided by diamond equals unstable ingot, which is a little bit of an error. You don't like to divide by diamond, it's always dangerous. So, uh, to get an activated division sigil, we need an unactivated division sigil, which you can find either in uh, chests or if you kill the wither. Uh, the wither usually drops one, but I've been lucky, I found one in a chest somewhere. I think it was a while back, actually, I don't even remember when I found it. So either my mining well picked it up or I found it somewhere. Kind of forget. But I've got one, so that's what's important. Uh, so if we take a look here, uh, you have to perform the activation ritual. So in order to do that, we have to sneak right-click on an enchanting table for more details. All right, let's see what's involved in this little ritual that we need to perform. So I just real quick crafted an enchanting table, and let's see what we need to do. Sneak, right click. Hmm, altar does not have a redstone circle. Altar cannot see the moon. Altar has sufficient natural earth. Altar must not be lit by outside sources. Too late, sacrifice must be made at midnight. Okay, so um, if I recall correctly, we need to sacrifice something. And in order to do that, we're going to choose one of these poor little sheep out here. That's probably what we're going to wind up sacrificing. Hey, where'd my cows go? I had cows. Oh well, looks like I have to go find some more cows. Um, what happens when we create this little ritual is it's going to, um, first off, um, give me an activated division sigil, but it also gives me something else that's very cool, and that is Cursed Earth. It's, uh, it's, it's an after effect of doing the division sigil, and what happens is the Cursed Earth will spawn a very large number of nasty enemies. So we want to make sure we have some really good armor on before we actually do this process. Um, the other thing that's cool about Cursed Earth is we can use it in a mob trap, so I want to grab it and have it ready later. However, if I just dig it up with a regular old shovel, it's going to be destroyed and turn into normal dirt. But... If I get myself a silk touch shovel, I shouldn't have too much of a problem. Uh, so let's see, do I have anything silk touch related over here? I don't think I've got the book for silk touch by chance. Do I? Fortune, fortune, fiery, unbreaking, thorns, projectile. No, no luck on silk touch. Um, now what I could do is probably just enchant a shovel a bunch of times, or I could use a little bit of Tinker's Construct. Uh, Tinker's Construct, I'm pretty sure, has a way to silk touch something. So let's go ahead and make that a reality. Let's go find it. If we take a look in our books over here, we'll see the silk touch availability is... Uh, might be materials in you. Where is that information on silk touch? Pretty sure it's the silky cloth or something like that. There it is, silky cloth. Ah, nice. So uh, we get uh, silky cloth, turn it into a silky jewel, and then uh, when we apply the silky jewel to any kind of tool, it'll automatically turn it into um, silk touch. Cool. Um, so how do we make a silky cloth? Uh, just some aluminum brass nuggets or a gold nugget. That's cool. That's actually really easy. So we shouldn't have too much trouble making this. We just need an emerald, which I'm pretty sure we've got some of. So let's put this book back. And we're going to go ahead and make a shovel that has this capability. So let's see. First, we're going to need four of you. I probably even have oh, some golden ore berries. Okay. There we go. And now one of you. Perfect. 
Do I have a tool forge in here somewhere? I have a tool station, that's enough. Um, and this doesn't have to be like the craziest shovel in the world, um, but I do want to make sure I can get as much cursed earth as possible. So let's make it out of iron. Does that sound like a plan? All right, let me just go smelt up a little bit of iron. We'll just drop it right in here. That'll get cooking down. And uh, probably want to break this thing. Throw it in here for the time being. Oh, I did steal my uh, ender chest, by the way. And let's make sure that I've got the pattern for a shovel. That's the excavator head. I need just like a regular old shovel pattern. Guess I don't have that one, do I? There it is, shovel head pattern. So we're going to want... Um, some aluminum brass. Yeah, I've got one. That's enough for me. Let me melt this down too. And we'll be back in a minute to get a nice shovel. Oh hey, perfect timing. I just came over to check my uh, Steve's card assembly manager thingy and we've got about 20 seconds left. Cool. Um, let's see. Let's get everything ready for the Galgadorian woodcutter. There we go. Now all we gotta do is install the uh, Little piece we're about to get out here. Five, four, three, two. Don't get too excited because we're going to have to do this again. There we go. Got my modular card out. He's got everything he needs. And I got my hardened woodcutter. Cool. Let's go use this to craft. Now we've got a Galgadorian woodcutter. Very expensive tool. The good news is that, you know, we can actually install it on here. Uh, keep in mind, Galgadorian woodcutter, modular cost, 120 Modular cart, uh, the reinforced hull, has a limit, so let's go ahead and uh, we're going to upgrade this guy again, so he's going to go in here. He has a limit of 150 on his complexity cap, so luckily this fits. So if we install the tool here, total time, 2 hours, 36 minutes, well that's going to happen next episode. Yeah, uh, that'll definitely be next episode, but it's cooking, so give me 2 hours and 36 minutes and then we'll be back with an awesome, but the good thing is that drill will never, ever break, so, you know. We've got that going for us. All right, so we've got the molten aluminum brass on the bottom here. Let's real quick throw this together. So let's just make ourselves a uh, cobblestone tool. Nope, wrong thing. This one, part builder. Cobblestone shovel head. You can go in there. Shovel head here. And we're going to borrow you. There we go. That'll give us the pattern that we need. Oh, except it pulled it into here. No big deal. And then uh, we can go ahead and get the iron shovel head. Cool. And what's involved in making a shovel, per se? Shovel, shovel, shovel. Yeah, just a stick in that. Cool. Let's go with a nether rack. That sounds like a good one. Nether rack's kind of a good, you know, not too expensive easy thing to make a tool rod out of. In fact, I might even have... This will save me an item. Still being efficient, I know. I'm crazy. Alright, uh, we will combine... Tool rod, tool rod, tool rod, tool rod. There we go. Another rack stick. Shovel. Nice. And now we just need to upgrade it. So you upgraded to this gets us the silky shovel. Nice. So uh, it should have a decent amount of durability, enough to pick up all the cursed earth that we need. It's got silk touch. Now there's several other things we need to do to prepare for this ritual. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to wrap up the episode here because we've hit that wrapping up point. We've got two hours and 34 minutes to wait anyway. So I'll be back next episode uh, to get ready to start working on the division sigil. At this point, we should have our compressed cobblestone complete, right? Yes, we've got... Oh, cool. It's still going. <laughs> Nice. See how long it actually takes to craft? Like, we've been, this has been auto running for probably five or ten minutes now. And remember, this thing can craft quite a bit at a time. So, trust me when I tell you it's a lot of cobblestone and it takes a long time. Oh, look at that. Oh, we're out of cobble. That's why. <laughs> All right. So, uh, things to do. Wow, we've actually got a lot of cobble over here. Cool. How'd you get all that cobble already? I don't even want to know. 
I'm just going to go ahead and dump it all into the system and let it cook. All right, guys, for now, Direwolf20 signing off. Hope you've enjoyed the episode. Like I said, back next time, uh, Division Sigil, Deep Dark, moving the mining well down there. Lots and lots of uh, excitement, and I've got a really cool way that we can move this mining well. I'm uh, excited to show you guys. All right, everybody, take it easy.